Give it up for your next guest, Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter, Will Jordan! <laughs> Welcome, sir. This is a lot further up than it looks from back there. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is big time. Yeah, this is the real, PLU. real deal. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and you actually, you grew up around here, right? You're from the Tacoma area? Yes, I grew up in Tacoma, Washington, on Hilltop, actually. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Wow, Hilltop people in here. Yeah, I'm still alive. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what high school did you go to? I went to Curtis High School Curtis? in the University of Any Curtis High School? Oh. Chipper, yeah. crickets, nothing. Ooh. Yeah, um, yeah I, I would catch the bus like an hour and a half every morning to go to school. Seriously? Yeah, it was a really good school and they had like a recording studio. So. Oh, so that's why, you, that's why you got in there. Is that how you kind of jumped into music was through that high school? Well, I was, I was in the recording studio honestly because I never had lunch money. I just would spend it on snacks. So like <laughs> during lunchtime, I'd go to the studio and like make beats and play songs and stuff. Wow. Um, and then uh, the video teacher, Mr. Jarvis, um, would come in and help me use Pro Tools, which is how I got into uh, engineering and recording like other artists and stuff. Wow, that yeah, is really yeah. cool. So it's because you didn't have lunch money that, yeah, yeah bullies don't take advantage of that. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so how did you get into show business? I mean, you have kind of a cool story I know as to how you actually broke in, but can you tell us a little bit how like, kind of you got started in your journey? Well, it's weird. Like I, it's not the route that you think that you're supposed to take, like what they would tell you. I, um, I actually, I, I graduated, I had a five-year plan, and I think I got marked down because my five-year plan was like unrealistic because I wanted, like, I wanted to, um, I wanted to have like a car and a girlfriend, and I wanted to have like <laughs> a platinum plaque, and I wanted to be signed to like a major label, and then like I wanted like a something else and they're like yeah we don't really see how you're gonna get there like we see your goals but what are the steps because there's no real steps to those things um but i got out of high school i wanted to go to college i couldn't go to the college i wanted to go to so i got a temp job um working at plu in the really? cafeteria wow. yeah i was Seriously. scanning people's cards so like i'm i i'm in school i'm at the school and i'm scanning lunch cards from kids that went to high school with me. <laughs> They're like, oh, you go here. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. But like, as things went by, I, um, I got a gig um, recording like rappers and singers and other artists at a studio in downtown Tacoma called Platinum Rain. And um, in exchange for my work, they would let me get free studio time, wow. which gave me time to like develop and grow and, and build my own, um, my own sound and my own vibe or whatever. And then um, eventually I started a writing team and some other cool stuff happened. Yeah. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. That's, uh, congrats, I mean, it's, did you get a bad grade on your five point plan? I think so, I barely graduated. I got the highest test score of any student ever in my, on my English test in order to pass, in order to graduate from high school. Like, I, if Seriously, I would have like, failed that test, I would have failed. And I, like, studied one night. I was a bad student, don't do what I did. <laughs> I was not a good student, yeah. Winds up Grammy nominated. Don't do what I did. Don't do it. Yeah. So, uh, how, what are you involved with now? Because I mean, you've worked with some amazing people, which I want to get into later. But what, what are you doing now? What is Will Jordan doing? It's, it's really funny. Um, so, there's a new space opening up in downtown Tacoma. I don't know if you guys have heard about it yet. It's like a dream come true. Because in Tacoma, a big thing, a big issue for artists and performers is that we don't have a whole lot of venues to perform at. Um, and so, there's a new venue. I think it's 500 people at seats. Oh, wow. And um, my mind is over there. It's like my brain. You'll hear a voice coming from there that answers all the questions that I have. And um, there, it's like a, there's like restaurants and like a really nice recording studio. It's called Alma Mater. It's on like I think 13th and Fawcett. They're finishing it up now. And we're actually, we were working on a six month residency. I was gonna do like a once a month concert, once a month show. Wow. And Cruz had the, Cruz, my manager and friend and partner over there, buddy over there with the glasses. Um, <laughs> he was like, what if we did it like late night style? And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. And I think a month later you reached out to us and I was like, oh wow, that's. And this is him telling us that we that got a I'm, contract and we're yeah. gonna do late night. That's not true. Well actually, <laughs> yeah. So, um, well actually coming here tonight, we were like, wow, this is like really, 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 really good. So oh, well, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, it's a team effort, it really is. Yes, everybody. we might become a distill your whole team and just hire all these college kids. 
because um, you guys are incredible. This is, in, yeah, this is amazing. But yeah, so we're, we're, um, we're working on booking all our guests for that. It starts May 12th, 11th, 11th. <laughs> and then from, them yeah. on stage. And then after that, it's going to be the second Saturday of every month, and it's going to be called The, the Night Show, um, which is like Travis Scott's song, The Antidote, The... Never mind. Oh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not with <laughs> it's this. all good. But um, yeah, so it'll be from uh, May until October, and we're gonna bring different guests in. We'll have a local guest, like a national guest, and like a musical guest. So. Oh wow, that's yeah. insane. Have you ever thought about bringing comics in to open for you? Um, yeah, we have. Nate Jackson's gonna come, and then hopefully a couple other comics. We're still kind of trying to figure out how to keep a good balance of like local. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. said yeah. yes. You heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just messing with you. Yeah. So could you tell us a little bit about, I mean, you're, you have connections, obviously, with some of these big-name people you're bringing in. How did you get into, so you're Grammy-nominated. You, you've written for Nicki Minaj and Rihanna. Can you tell us a little bit about that part of your journey? Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that, actually, a lot of that comes from the PLU thing. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, no, I'm just, that's not, that's not true. He found his location. <laughs> he found it. He found it. <laughs> no. <laughs> So after that, I got like a really good job making like a bunch of money at a warehouse. It was like, I was miserable. Um, I, <laughs> I lost that job because I was going to studio sessions, staying up till three or four in the morning. Um, so then I'm just doing music full time. And then one day I get a call from my girlfriend, which was one of the goals on the list to have a girlfriend. And I think I had a car too. Yeah, down. Yeah, and so, um, and I'm working as an engineer, which was another goal. And so she, she's like, um, hey, I got some news. I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, we're going to have a baby. And I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think I'm 20 at that time. And uh, I was living with my parents. I just moved back in with my parents. I was making maybe 50 bucks a week on a good week. Wow. And uh, there was no way I was going to be able to do it. So I was like, I'm going to put music on hold and go back to the warehouse and make some money and just be ready. I got to be a, a man and step up. And she's like, well, don't give up just yet. Give it three months and see what happens. And I'm like, what's going to happen in Tacoma in three months? Three like, there's months. no way. Um, but we, um, the, the writing team I was working with, we worked and worked day and night, day and night. It's a team called Writer's Block, a guy named Klimershad. And um, we worked day and night, day and night. We sent a song. They loved the first song. It was some people in LA. They loved the first song. And then we're like, oh, we got this. We got it in the bag. We just got to keep sending music, and we'll be straight. Maybe the next 50, 60 songs we sent, it was just thumbs down every single time. Like, they hated everything. And then um, we sent maybe a couple good ones. Like, maybe three out of, like, 65 songs were, like, wow. good. And then one day we get a phone call um, about three months down the road, and they're like, hey, don't tell anybody, because we don't know this for sure yet. Um, but we think that one of the songs you wrote might be on Nicki Minaj's album, and it has Rihanna singing the chorus. And like, <laughs> I'm freaking out, because I, for one, I, there's a baby on the way. Like, I haven't told my parents, because I knew like, if I told my dad, like, hey, I got a kid coming, why are you at the studio? You need to go back and get a job. You need to have a plan. I was like, I, there's no way I can tell him he's not going to believe that this is possible. So like that happening was like the most mind blowing thing, which is a testament to you guys that if you are doing something, at least give it three months and see what you can do. Like if when you're at that point where the train is coming and you're in the car and you're trying to make it like, see what you can do. Give it, go to the last. You got yeah. three months before the train. Yes. Gets three, drive slow. Three months. But anything is, if I, can, if I can do what I did and get through what I got through in three months, then you guys can do anything. So, yeah. when, like you said, you sent in 60 songs, you got a thumbs down, and this guy is good. We oh, heard wow. him sound checking. He is phenomenal. You're, you're going to want to stick around for the after show music. It's Thank incredible. You. Thank you so much. It's absolutely incredible. So do you have, I mean, obviously the moment of hearing, getting the phone call, do you have any moments that really stick out from your experiences that's kind of like, I can't believe this happened, or like you met a person? Oh, or, yeah, I got a, a lot of those. Um, <laughs> So after, so yeah, the, the whole album thing happened. We got a publishing deal. So I was able to like, um, like pay my rent and get an apartment and, a, and diapers and things for my daughter. Was that part of the daughter. plan? Was that part of your? That was not part of the plan, having a baby. <laughs> not that soon. But, um, but we, got, we got a platinum plaque. The album went platinum, I think, in a, in a month or something like that. Yeah, and oh. so I got the platinum plaque. I was like, oh, wow. Oh, so that then, was on your plan. Yeah, so that was the three plan. things you got? I think that's, I can't count. I didn't go to college. <laughs> that's right, yeah, he didn't <laughs> do what <he laughs> no. and, then, um, and then I think that year they got, either that year or the following year, they got nominated for a Grammy. So I was like, oh, wow, we got a Grammy nomination. We go to the Grammy Awards. 
and I'm just, I'm the most starstruck person. Like I can't, I don't even try to act cool when a celebrity, I, I lose my mind. And so we're standing there and everybody's waiting for like Nicki Minaj to get there and Drake to get there and all these big names to get there. It's like the Young Money Grammy party. And I'm standing in line and um, we see like an entourage coming in, the biggest security guards in the world that look super like scary and intimidating and um, Drake is with them. And I see Drake and I feel like my whole team is there. I'm, I'm thinking somebody's gonna say something to stop him and nobody says anything. So I'm like, Drake! And he's like, he stops. And I'm like, oh, he stopped. I didn't think he was gonna hear me. <laughs> And um, so I'm like, uh, he's like, what's up? I'm like, could you tell Nikki that the guys that wrote Fly are here? And he's like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> and just keeps walking. And I'm like, I could have said anything in the world to Drake. And I just made myself like, nobody cares that the guys that wrote. You had him run errands for you. Right. You can do this for me. Right. <laughs> and he, of course, he didn't remember to do that. But yeah, that, so if I ever meet him again, I want to just apologize for that. Just, the next time, I'm sorry, Drake. No, yeah. no context. Yeah. 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 So uh, you were writing songs. Was there a, it's kind of a transition that went from being a songwriter to a performer? Yeah. So, um, so in growing up, I, I should say, like, I, I, people ask me how long I've been doing music and singing and stuff, and I, I, I tell them I've been trying since I was a little kid. Like, I was trying since I was maybe five, and I was just bad for a really, 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 really long time. <laughs> um, and so I think around the time I was like, after we did the song, um, I feel like I started to find my voice because before that I was just focusing on songwriting and producing and making beats. Um, and then I think a year after we did the record, the label that I was writing for that gave Nikki the song, they approached me about doing an artist deal. And um, at this time I was used to kind of being in the background and like I was doing stuff locally, but I wasn't really in the spotlight like that. So this kind of gave me the confidence to step out and like really like believe in myself like, wow, I. I know I can write records. I know I can do my own beats in the studio and I can sing in my room, but it means a lot to have like a, a major label like looking at me and wanting to do work with me. So we, um, I went to LA and we worked on an album for maybe six or seven months. Um, we got most of the album done. We did a bunch of like label meetings and really nerve wracking, but really fun, exciting stuff. And I think at the end of it, it was just like, I knew that if I followed down this path, so the label I was working for was the same label that um, they signed Jason Derulo, they have Sean Kingston, they have um, a girl named Auburn and a guy named Man at that time. And so I was supposed to come in and be like the person that helps them kind of rebrand and become like a more organic, down to earth instead of pop label. And um, I was excited about that, but then the further we got, the more I started feeling like I sound like Jason Derulo, and there's already a Jason Derulo. And I'd actually written a song for Jason Derulo called Dumb. So I'm like, I can't be the same person that I'm writing for. I, I want to be myself. I'm from Tacoma. I, there's a sound that I want to incorporate into what I'm doing. I want to represent, so yeah. Cool. Coming back to like yeah. who you are. Right, so um, they, they gave me the confidence to be myself and to find myself, and to, they put me through a lot of like, writing boot camp type stuff where I really had to learn how to really write records. Um, and then at the end it was just like, I gotta go back home because I can't, I, can't, I can't be myself here. And they understood where I was coming from. So I came back to Tacoma and just started to rebuild and build my own team and invest in the city and try to do stuff here. So That's yeah. really cool, Come on, bring it home. You know? Yeah, yep. Bring it yep. back for people like you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, are there any things, are there things that you write about a lot, things that come out, any like themes that happen in your songs that you can yeah. speak on? Yeah, uh, a lot of my, like I started writing songs um, public and sharing them with people um, because there was a girl that I loved in high school. <laughs> and this was, these were, I don't know if you guys know, even know what MySpace is, but this is back in the MySpace <laughs> era. And, um, I couldn't, she wouldn't answer her phone or something or she wouldn't write me back. So I was like writing songs to put on MySpace so she could hear my heart. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah. So like, but it, 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 what was important though was it taught me how to like incorporate emotion and feeling and passion into my music. Cause it was like, I'm feeling these things. I'm like holding back tears as I'm recording these songs on my mom's laptop speaker. To put on MySpace. <laughs> right, to put on MySpace. So like, but it, it taught me how to be vulnerable in my music and how to like write from like a real place. And then as I grew, I learned how to kind of polish it up and write more things other than just heartbreak songs. But um, I, yeah, everything is based, like a lot of my stuff is, is written for like 
live shows and and I think about what it's going to feel like and sound like live and then just as a producer I like making cool beats and stuff with lots of bass and and interesting sounds but um it kind of just bas- it's depends on what I'm feeling I, I I think of my music as a soundtrack which sounds super cliche but as like a soundtrack for my life and the people around me but that's really the best way I can describe it honestly well, that's, that's awesome that's Thank you. super cool that you go and you, you uh, finding the emotional thing, I think, is super yeah. cool, where you figure out how to tap that and use that in your art. It's therapy. Um, yeah. there's, a, there's a line, I'm not even remember what the line is, but it's talking about how like, that's, that's so important, that's what separates uh, um, just something it's like music from art, you know, wow. like those two things. Wow, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get that. I'm, I'm uh, that. So uh, one final question for you. Yeah. Where can we find your stuff? Like, if we want to buy your music, if we want to listen to you on Spotify, how do we find you? So there's two things we can do here. <laughs> um, first, um, and this is good because people are watching this. So I'm very, uh, I'm a people person. I like relationships. I like connecting with people. And I'm an introvert, which is weird because that, those don't mix. But um, when I, so every show, I give out my number to everybody to contact me with. And this way we can stay in touch. I can let you know when we have shows. Um, so I'm going to give you guys my number, if that's OK. Wow. All right? If you're ready. This is Will so Jordan's what, number. This is my number. Grammy nominated singer songwriter. Yeah. Yes. Um, so if you take out your phones, you're going to have to. <laughs> You're going to be so mad. Um, so you're going to text we will, which is just one word, we will, as one word. And I say this a bunch of times because everybody always messes it up and it doesn't work. But we will, as one word, to the number 66866, which is my, it's not my phone number number, but it's oh, my I'm number. Yeah, I know, I know. Right. I know everybody's always mad when I do that. But, but I actually do like send messages out at like three in the morning. And they're all appropriate Specifically, messages. Specifically, only yes. three in the morning. No. That's when you get <laughs> in the studio, that's when I'm working. Um, so I'll send out like songs and like um, little just random cool things I think are dope or like invites to the next shows I have coming up. Um, and then you can find my music on Apple Music, on Spotify. Title pays the best. Title pays the best if anybody has title, which nobody has title. But title pays the best. But yeah, Apple Music, uh, my website is wooljordanmusic.com. There's free music on there, SoundCloud, all that good stuff. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank we're going to be hearing me. more from him. And we were-